Good morning and welcome. This is Pentecost Sunday. What a joyful day. We have a lot going on in worship today. Uh, we have Holy Communion, baptisms, and reception of new members. So we are having a true Pentecost today. Um, we are going to have a processional. And so when Daryl starts singing and playing, we invite you to stand. If you picked up a streamer, wave it in the air. And either way, sing loudly. Whoever you are or wherever you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. We invite you to silence your cell phones as this is a service of worship as best not to interrupt God. Um, also, for those of you on Zoom, we appreciate if you mute yourselves, you're muted as you come in uh, because we can hear you speaking. So we appreciate if you would mute yourselves. Let us prepare our hearts for worship for Pentecost. So we're going to open with a Come Holy Spirit song. It is from Nigeria, and we've done this maybe four years ago. It's been a long time. So I'm going to teach it to you again. In your bulletin at the beginning, you will see processional. And we are going to sing the African words and then the English words going back and forth. So I'd like to teach you the African words now. I will say one line at a time and you repeat after me. Wa, 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 a, mi, mi, mo. Wa, 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 a, mi, mi, mo. A, mi, mi, mo. Say that. A, mi, mi, mo. Second line is wa, 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 a, la, ba, ra. Wa, 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 a, la, ba, ra. One more time. Wa, 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 a, la, ba, ra. Third line is wa, o, wa, o, wa, o, meaning come. Wa o, wa o, wa o. Okay, now I will sing one line at a time and you can uh, sing it back to me. Wa, 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 e, mi, mi, mo. Try it. Wa, 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 e, mi, mi, mo. Second line, listen. Wa, 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 la, ba, ra. Try it. Wa, 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 la, ba, ra. Wa, o, wa, o. Wow, try it. Wow, wow, wow. Let's try the whole thing. Wow, 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 a mi mi mo. Wow, 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 la ba ra. Wow, 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 a mi mi mo.
they did that. Good morning. Good morning. Can't you feel the Spirit of God moving among us? Let us open ourselves to hear God speaking. I invite you to join me in the responsive call to worship as I begin. The spirit of imagination is a gift to all people. The spirit of faithfulness is the gift of the earth. The spirit of hope breathes in all those who suffer today. The spirit of freedom was announced by those who went before us and we proclaim it again today. The spirit of freedom was announced by those who went before us and we proclaim it again today. Spirit of love is Christ. Oh, I did that part. Sorry. <laughs> My mistake. Spirit, I looked away and then that's what happened. The spirit of love is Christ's gift to the church in every age. We see the flame of the spirit of God. The Spirit is dancing, moving, struggling, rising, and calling to the ends of the earth. We have seen the flame of the Spirit in our midst. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Breathe into our hearts this day. Bless and inspire this time of celebration and fellowship that we may live spirit-filled lives of love and compassion for all. Amen. Our gathering hymn in is Come, Share the Spirit, found on page 62 of your hymnal. Amen. You may be seated.
come to a time of forgiveness, if you're like me, there's probably times this week where you weren't so loving, you weren't so godlike, but God asked us to share and love one another and ask for forgiveness. So let us come to our prayer of forgiveness responsibly as I begin. Hear our confessions, O God. Forgive us for the many occasions when we have enjoyed the riches of your creation without offering a word of thanks. Forgive us when you call us to do your work, but we act as if we never heard you. Let us pray together. We have breathed the Holy Spirit in our reluctance to be led into new ways. Open us to your spirit and put a fire within us. Amen. Let us be in silence. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, stand if you like and hear the assurance of God's grace. God's mercy is new every day, and in this we can rejoice. Let us sing Halle Hallelujah. God's forgiveness, and the beginning of growth into full Christian faith into discipleship. And so I have a few words for Henry here since he's a child. So what this means, Henry, is even though we don't always do what God wants us to do, this is for adults too, actually, <laughs> God still loves us. And when we're baptized, we're saying, yay, God, I agree with that. 
This is the, so everyone say with me, people. This is the water of baptism. Out of this water, we rise with new life, forgiven of sin, and one in Christ, members of Christ's body. So baptism reminds us that we are God's children forever. So it's now time for your vows. Henry, Erica, Marion, and Jody, do you desire to be baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? Do you declare your faith in the God who is clearly seen in Jesus Christ, but who is also active in the lives of all who work for love and community, peace and justice? I do with the help of God. Do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow in the Christian faith, to do justice and serve God with love and mercy? I do with the help of God. And this is to everyone gathered here. Do you who witness and celebrate this sacrament promise your love, support, and care to the ones about to be <coughs> baptized as they live and grow in Christ? We promise our love, support, and care. Let us unite with the church in all times and place in confessing our faith in the triune God. Everyone, do you believe in God, our creator and sustainer? I believe in God who loves me as his child. Do you believe in Jesus Christ who shows us how to live? I believe in Jesus Christ as my teacher and guide. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit who comforts and stirs us to action? I believe in the Holy Spirit as the one who lives within me. Amen. So Henry, I'll baptize you first. Is if you'll hang on to these. So this is what we call a little baptismal stole. I'm wearing a stole, a Pentecost stole, and a comma because God is not done speaking. We don't have these for adults, but we have one for you. And it means God is wrapping God's arms all around you. So if you'll come closely, I'm going to take this shell, and you get to keep this afterwards. So I baptize you in the name of God, the Creator, Jesus, the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, the Sustainer. Thanks be to God. And you can step back, Erica. I baptize you in the name of God, the Creator, Jesus, the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Comforter. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Marion, I baptize you in the name of God the Creator, Jesus the Redeemer, the Holy Spirit, our Comforter. Thanks be to God. Jody, Jody, I baptize you in the name of God the Creator, Jesus the Redeemer, the Holy Spirit, our Comforter. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh, holy Jesus, you've been here with us, and just like you were baptized, we are baptized today. We thank you for Jody and Marion and Henry and Erica and their new life in Christ here with us. Bless them and sustain them in the coming days that they may know your love and they may know our love. Amen. By your baptism, you were made one with us in the body of Christ, the church. Today, we rejoice in your pilgrimage of faith, which has brought you to this time and place. We celebrate your presence in this household of faith. Let us, the members of First Congregational United Church of Christ, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. We welcome you to this family of Christ. We promise to walk with you on this journey of faith. We will love you and will pray with you as we all seek to serve God together. In the name of Jesus and on behalf of First Congregational UCC, we extend to you the hand of Christian love. Amen. Amen. Okay, so now you can come up, the members can come up, and the new members who are going to be installed, please come forward.
with the help of God. Do you promise to welcome them into the full life of this congregation of Jesus Christ? We welcome you with joy in the common life of this church. We promise you our friendship and prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses of our risen Savior. In the name of Jesus Christ, and on behalf of First United Congregation, First Congregational United Church of Christ, we extend to you the hand of Christian love, welcoming you into the company of this noble church. You may be seated. So I'm going to introduce the new members. I have met, all, all the new members have been through three classes at least, or an abbreviated version of it, because we had to do a lot on Zoom. And uh, I have found them marvelously wonderful and diligent to want to serve in this church and to be a member of our body. But you also made a promise. So if you don't like something they do, or they come up with a new idea, you just promised that you would support them. So it's <laughs> gonna be a beautiful day. <laughs> So um, I'll start with Judy Regalia, and her sponsor is Carol Doherty and Marilyn, and Peggy Sparrow. Her sponsor is Lynn Bird, Marion Pitcher, Erica, and of course Henry Ayers, Liz and Matt Graham are their sponsors. Corey uh, and Joe Jackson and Teddy are their sponsors. They met with her, but Teddy had to work today. 
Jody Gibson, and Mary Kelly's her sponsor, Mark McCormick, Patty Haspel's his sponsor, and they knew each other previously. And then Marie Studebaker, Daryl is her sponsor. Actually, Barbara Oliver is gonna be her sponsor, but Daryl is the one who got, got Marie to come to church. So <laughs> he's standing in for her today. So welcome to all of you, and your sponsors have a little gift for you. After the service, we're gonna have a reception. indicates that praise is the natural response to God's gifts to God's people. When David brought the covenant chest to Jerusalem, he appointed Asaph and his relatives to lead in praise. After the Levites chanted a marvelous song, the people responded in praise to the eternal. This portion of scripture today is a recognition of God's good gifts. Hear now this beautiful passage. There is so much here, O Eternal One, so much you have made by the wise way in which you create riches and creatures fill the earth. Of course, the sea is vast and stretches like the heavens beyond view, and numberless creatures inhabit her. From the tiny to the great, they swarm beneath her waves. Our ships skim her surface, while the monsters of the sea play beneath. And all of these look to you to give them food when the time is right. When you feed, they gather what you supply. When you open your hand, they are filled with good food. When you withdraw your presence, they are dismayed. When you revoke their breath, their life goes out of them. And they become again the dust of the earth from which you formed them at the start. When you send out your breath, life is created and the face of the earth is made beautiful and is renewed. May the glorious presence of the eternal linger among us forever and may Yahweh rejoice in the greatness of God's own works. This is God who rattles the earth with a glance. Sophia Almighty who sets mountains to smoking with a touch. I will sing to the eternal all of my life I will call my God good as long as I live. Let us continue to rejoice in God's goodness as we hear the anthem celebrating Pentecost by Enoch Samra.
Thank you, Ina. We have been revived. Our scripture today is from the book of Acts, chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? But how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you say, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Nor, no, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Wow. You know, Pentecost is one of my favorite times of the year. I was ordained on Pentecost Sunday, and Daryl gave me this stole as a gift to me on uh, the day of my ordination. And it's a time when many churches celebrate the beginning of the Christian church and acknowledge spirit spiritual gifts of disciples. There are some congregations that have people fill out a form and say, this is my gift that I'm going to give for the church, and so we're not talking about money. But I think it's especially appropriate, and we're doing justice in Pentecost by having our new member party after worship. Streamers, drums, baptisms, songs, and a cake. And why might this be appropriate? Because we're taking our clues from the New Testament. We can see that Pentecost is the culmination and the beginning of the work of Christ. Our passage today is uh, when the disciples are meeting with people long after Jesus has died and resurrected. And they're trying to continue to tell his story and to get followers. So this is not when Jesus was walking on the earth. And he's told them to go to Jerusalem and wait there for power on high. In the Gospel of Luke uh, and also in part of Acts, he tells them that. Go to Jerusalem and wait for power on high. Sounds a little like a science fiction movie, don't you think? Especially all this stuff about the moon turning blood. Well, I actually saw the blood orange moon as a matter of fact but all kinds of mist and smoke. Well, all year long in the Christian church in our liturgical year, we've been building up to this time. And they have too. Jerusalem's the place where the Messianic community actually began. According to Luke, it's the place where Jesus' story began, where he became a prophet. And here, Christ was martyred. And then in Luke, he was vindicated. So it's from Jerusalem that God's message of hope and repentance and forgiveness is proclaimed over and over. The time is right for the new age to begin. And just as the prophets had promised, it begins with the pouring out of the Spirit. 
and what a journey it begins. From the count we have today, it's no doubt a stellar event. A sound like the rushing of wind, divided tongues like fire on people's heads. Mm, interesting. We almost cannot imagine. These are the only of the first signs that are to usher in the new age. And the result, which I didn't read in this scripture, says that 3,000 souls were added that very day. And why? Because salvation and forgiveness were offered without strings and attachments. Scholars usually agree that this Pentecost event serves to inaugurate the newly constituted people of God. But I don't know about you, but it does seem a bit odd to me. I mean, it might be best if I tried to take this strange event and break it down to some sort of understanding, whereas we can jump in the story and find ourselves. But biblical scholar William Willimon says this, and I agree with him. Most of us preachers have been trained to demarginalize the gospel, to make the odd and the outrageous seem normal. But we cannot take the gospel or Christ, for that matter, and wrap them up in a neat little package and say, oh, here's the answers to life's questions, or do it this way, or believe this way, and all will be well. Rather, I project that the good news is in Christ and community is in the midst of our questions, in the midst of the odd, the out of the ordinary, the unexplainable. And it's here that the tongues help a bit. This is a defining moment as we heard in the story. It's as if the tongues have a personal language for each person in their own understanding. I'd like to suggest that the gospel of Jesus comes crashing in just like that, sometimes gently, but sometimes it shatters our ordinary thinking and complacency. Kierkegaard says that too often we as disciples attempt to put people at ease with Christianity, introduce a little of time as easily as possible. Hmm. In the New Testament, however, Christianity is the profoundest wound that can be inflicted upon a person, calculated on the most dreadful scale to collide with everything. That's what Kierkegaard says. This is Pentecost, my friends. What might this look like today as we proclaim our witness to the world? Well, I have a feeling it's not going to be customer satisfaction. We can easily become distracted from the gospel in our attempts to attract folks to church. We can become enamored with growth in numbers and busy ourselves with the task and design of programs that we invite people in or we want to meet a certain niche. It's tempting to advertise the gospel in our faith community as a place where everyone fits in, where God meets your need, where your gifts can be used. And we might be partly right, but I propose that we're wrong if we stay there. The gospel changes us. The gospel is not about what's popular and doesn't make our, and doesn't make our worship service contemporary. Do we have Christian enrichment classes that are stimulating and uplifting? Do we have youth programs that are hip, rap, metal, pop, and rock and roll? No. I think rather the gospel and message of Jesus Christ goes smack up against society. Jesus hung out with the marginalized, the forgotten, the wounded, the sick, the trapped, and the whores of the world. Jesus healed and cast out demons. He whined and dined with the outcasts. Sure, he went to the temple too, but in doing so, he challenged the law of the temple. He swore at the cheaters. He insisted they live above the laws of the synagogue. So you see, even in church, Jesus caused a ruckus. I remember a number of years ago, we were giving out food and money, actually, to almost anybody who showed up. And somebody was concerned that I was spending the money the wrong way. And they said to me, Pastor Bonnie, what if the word gets out that you're feeding all these people? We'll have a line out the front door. Wow. Wouldn't it be marvelous to have a line out the front door of people coming here to accept love and charity and compassion? I mean, we've got it wrong if we think we're giving too much. Pastor Leighton Ford says, Christ gives us a radically new identity, freeing us from both self-righteousness and self-condemnation. He liberates us to accept people that were once excluded and to break the bondage of things, even good things, that once drove us. In particular, the gospel makes us welcoming and respectful towards those who do not share our beliefs. Let me say it again. The gospel makes us welcoming and respectful 
toward those who do not share our beliefs. Whew. This is exactly what we discussed last week in our effort to live in unity with others. Mother Teresa once said, being a Christian does not mean converting everybody to be a Christian. It means that you help the Buddhists be the best Buddhists. Mm -hmm. And so there she shows that it's not putting our ideas onto somebody else. But this excites me because this is our calling and we're already equipped to do these things of welcoming, accepting, loving people who disagree with us because the Holy Spirit has come and settled on us. I would love to see tongues of fire dancing above your heads, but I see it in your hearts. The tongues of fire dancing, saying, rise up, act, love, do your good deeds. For some of you, the tongues are shouting justice in war-torn war lands. To others, the tongues are gently bidding mercy, mercy to all. To our creative folks, the tongues are swirling and whooshing, crying out dramas and scriptures for teaching. To most of us, the tongues are screaming compassion for the misunderstood, the troubled, and the people caught in addictions. The tongues don't stop there. The dancing fires are calling us to stop the violence in our world, and on and on. And we can't sit still. We have to remember that the fire has been lit. I remember as a teenager, I attended a prayer meeting weekly with some of my friends. I know some of you have heard me say this before. And a lot of them, it was back in the Jesus movement where there were a lot of house churches and creation movements. And they were getting baptized by the Holy Spirit and they were speaking in tongues. Now it sounded like a lot of gibberish to me. I kept asking for the baptism of the Holy Spirit week after week and I wanted to speak in the tongues the same way. But it never happened to me. So I told my foster mom about it and I said, I wonder if God's ever going to give me that special gift of speaking in tongues and, you know, let, let me know that I'm really filled with the Holy Spirit. She says, honey child, you have enough trouble handling one language. God's not going to give you a second language. <laughs> I guess there's a lot of wisdom in that. I spent a lifetime of finding ways to tell God's new people that I love them. That's the tongue that Jesus has given me. But the gospel isn't a neat little package that we can say, come here, we found the answers, and you'll get it right, and you'll speak a certain way. Now I'm convinced that God is in the middle of the questions. When I met with our new members, I said, you know, not everybody's a good fit here at First Congregational Church because we don't have all the answers. We live in the questions. We hang in the margins, if you will, because we try to touch people where they are, the realities in which they live. And so will our church look different? <laughs> you bet. It's going to be as different as every person who comes in. And the Will people come here saying, is this a place for me? Well, they came this week, but not like you might expect. They're not here in the pews, but they were at my front door. This week, we had a homeless family of five eking out a living in a car. Didn't have anywhere to sleep, so we put them up in a hotel. We gave them water, and we gave them food, and I found some toys for the children. So we might be a few less toys in the nursery, but it's okay. We've got plenty, and we can get more. And we do this because we see the gospel as we believe God loves us, and so we're going to love somebody else. Does it matter that they show up to become a member? No. They're the people that God brought to us. This is Pentecost. It's God raining down. A couple years ago, I met with a prisoner who was quite delusioned by life, and he had asked me to come see him. Um, and he said he told one of the he told me that one of the counselors came to him and said let go and let God and it's gonna be all right I don't buy it he said how's that gonna get me out of here just cross, trust God they say and God will get you out of here just turn your life over to God what do you say he asked me well I said in a rather firm voice God didn't get you in here, and God ain't going to get you out. <laughs> His head shot up, and he seemed surprised. God is with you, my friend, I told him. But I refuse to believe that God is some kind of fixer-upper who will somehow miraculously come and make it all right. And then I told him the story of Paul thrown in jail unjustly, the Apostle Paul. I said, is that you? Are you here unjustly? No, he said, I, I was wrong in what I did. I said, well, then you have to pay the price. These are the rules of society, and you broke them. You have to suffer the consequence. 
So then he looks at me and he says, so what will your Jesus do for me? Just what is it that you preach? I guess it's not I can let go and let God. I said, no, my message is far more radical than that. God loves you and me and forgives us. Jesus showed us that God's love is new every day and available to all. We could call by God by name and be assured that God calls us by name. It gives us comfort to be God's child. So what does it mean for you, he asked loud. You've got everything going for you. I don't know, I said. Christianity isn't a neat little package that I can hand to you, and your life will be suddenly all right. For me, well, who God is changes on a daily basis. Sometimes God's comfort. Sometimes God's a kick in the butt and says, get going, Bonnie. Sometimes God is a healer. And I said, what I know is it means I'm here for you. I'm praying for you and I love you. And I will write to you as you sit out the long hot days in prison. But you're not alone. And I will celebrate your life, I told this young man. I'll seek to find good gifts in you that God has put there. Maybe that's not enough for you, I said aloud. He didn't respond. And I kept on visiting him until he left. You know, it's God in the new journey. I told him I refuse to give you pat answers and try to get you on a spiritual high so that you think all's gonna be well. Cause no, it's not gonna all be well. You're gonna have to pay fines. You're gonna have repercussions from your deeds. This will follow you a long time after you get out. But with God, there's mercy and there's comfort and love. What I do know, I told him, is that you're God's child and you're blessed with gifts and they're waiting to be discovered. He started to cry. It means a lot that you're here, he said. I just want to get out of here so bad I was stupid. Yep, I said you sure were. But new life is here right now. You need to make new decisions, new choices. You can use this time in prison as a time to think about it. Think about life you'll have when you get out. It won't be easy, but you'll have people supporting you. This, my friends, is the tongues of fire of Pentecost. This is the Holy Spirit raining down on this young man, on the just and the unjust. This is living with the hopeless, and instead of giving him answers, giving love and support and comfort. Charles Ringma says, our world is tired of cliche religious answers and empty political promises, but what is winsome and attractive is love in action. A love spawned by God that sweeps us up in its intensity and transformative power and as such so captivates us that we, be, we want to live this love in serving others. This is powerfully attractive. And I have to tell you that one phrase that every new member told me when I asked them, why did you come to us? Why do you want to be a member? They said, it's because this church is so welcoming. That welcoming love is powerful and will go deeper than you really know. You might think members who've been members a long time, you're just showing up because you want to worship, but you are sending a powerful message. I call this dancing spirit of God within us. The gospel of Jesus is like that, breaking down walls and building on love. So in this birthday of the church, let's whoop it up a little. Let's listen to the whoosh of the spirit that dares us to be the church not programs and contemporary language and different kinds of music, but an invitation to everyone who comes to our doors. I suppose some people will not find us big enough or strong enough or loud enough or contemporary enough, but God will send those people to us who just might need our tenderness, our warmth, our energy, and our vision. And I'm convinced that if we're listening to those tongues of fire above our heads, we'll be the love that God wants. Happy Pentecost. I invite you to stand if you like, and we're going to sing Spirit of God Descend Upon My Heart. A beautiful song, 290.
You may be seated. Let us come to prayer. Amazing God, we are your Pentecost children. We're here to revel in the gifts with which you have blessed us. We thank you this day for those who have joined our membership and those who have been baptized. We ask your blessing on them as they find their way, not only in our church, but in the communities where they live, that their light will shine brightly so that others may know their love. Today, we ask for your healing mercies on Hillary, Katie, George, and for those that we don't even know about who might be suffering in great pain this morning. We ask your comfort for those who are suffering with addictions or mental health illnesses. God, we know it can be a lonely path for them and for family members struggling to work out these issues. We thank you for doctors and for medications that can help. But we also know we are the people that can stand with them in times of struggle. We thank you for our children and for our teachers and parents. We pray that we might teach them to love one another. We ask your guidance and strength and courage as we try to find ways to get rid of the violence in our world. God, we know it begins at home with the words we say and the thoughts we think. So show us how to live peaceably with others. We pray for our sister church, a union and angels camp for Pastor Liz and her husband. As Al comes home from the nursing home, we pray that it might be a smooth transition for them. We pray for their ministry there as they serve our community, that they might also be a light. We thank you for the care and the love here in our own parish and that our numbers, as they grow, our love grows. We ask your blessing on the families that we helped this week who do not have a place to live. Help us to provide much care for others. We thank you for Jesus who showed us how to live and we pray now the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Let us not fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, we are blessed with God's generous spirit within us. We do not only give our money, but our whole lives to serve God and others. Let us bring our offerings with joy and celebration. You may place your connection cards in the offering plates now. Will the ushers please come forward?
Please join me in the unison prayer of dedication. Loving God, rain down your spirit on these gifts that they may feed the hungry and clothe the poor. Increase our love for others and may our love for you be evident everywhere. Take our talents and use them to bring peace to a hurting world. Bless our efforts to tell your good news and give us a bold witness through the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. We come to our service of Holy Communion. Our table is open to everyone. We believe that this Holy Feast is God's gift to us. So we remember that on the night that Jesus was with his disciples, and there were other people at the supper too, I'm sure. They were, he was recalling what was going to happen to them, to him. He said, I'm gonna to have to leave you. And they didn't wanna hear it. They had been hanging out and seeing the miracles, the wonderful things he had been doing. And so they didn't want him to leave. But he knew that it would be hard for them. So he took the bread and he broke it. <laughs> and he blessed it and he said this is my body broken for you he also took the cup and he said this is my blood poured out for you drink you, all of you and you know these gifts are gifts in a physical way we're going to eat and we're going to drink but with them come a spiritual blessing a holiness that we know we're loved by God. There's a mystery in it. I can't explain it. That's why I love communion, because it just lets me know I'm blessed. It's a sign of God's good love for us and the fact that Jesus died to show us the way. And so we can revel in the Pentecost because Jesus lived a life that was holy and was for other people, for everybody. It wasn't just for good and righteous in the temple but ordinary people like you and me. Let us pray. Loving God, rain down there in your spirit on this bread and this cup, that as we eat and drink, we may know your spirit within us. Thank you for these holy gifts. Amen. And now if you'll take the little cup and we'll eat the bread first. It is gluten-free bread. This is the body of Christ for you and for me. And then carefully take the little cup of juice. The cup of grace and mercy. There might still be a few wine cups in there. I'm not sure. We <laughs> got the word juice, but you found it. <laughs> Let us pray a prayer of thanksgiving. Jesus, we truly thank you that we're feasted at your table, your table, that's open to everyone. How glorious this is. Empower us this week that we might be that table for others, whether it's physical food or spiritual food or loving hands and spirit. Let us be the powerful Pentecost person for those who need us. Amen. And now we're going to sing, Every Time I Feel the Spirit, please stand and join us on page 282.
You may be seated. A few announcements for today. Uh, in your bulletin, you have an insert about our camping trip. So uh, we really need you to sign up for that if you can come so we know how many to prepare, uh, our meals to prepare. Also, um, the congregational meeting to have our annual reports and look at our budget a little is June 26th following worship. If you have not yet sent a picture to the church office uh, for our directory, please do it by Tuesday because Jenny almost has the new directory done. So if we have an old one of you, we're going to use it. But if you want a new updated picture, just send it an email to her. The nugget is for June is online. You can look at it. She did send you a link, so you already have, have that. It is helpful if you read the weekly email. That's my way to communicate with you, um, get you some information, and let you know what's happening. And you can always go back and refer to it. Uh, I have a little trick in my email that I color code things. Church, personal, children, nonsense, habitat, you know. And so I color code the ones from the church and I can find it quickly. If you don't know how to do it, I can show you. Anyway, uh, also, um, Jody Gibson is having a life celebration for her mother this coming Saturday, June 11th at 11. Jody's our new member, one of our new members. A luncheon will be served. So if you can go, please RSVP. Wednesday in the weekly email, we will have the address for you. So it would be wonderful for us to come and share this life celebration with Jody. It's been, not only did she lose her mom, but her sister had died as well. So she's had a tough couple of years here. After the postlude, we're going to let the new members go first, and uh, we are going to greet them there. You can cut the cake. We already took the pictures. Uh, we have a wonderful cake and fruit and cheese and crackers. It's going to be a big celebration. Please introduce yourself to the new members. If you don't have your name tag on, say your name to them because they're trying to get to know all of us. So we really appreciate it. After the postlude, I'm going to dismiss the new people. Then I'll have a dismissal and a response, and, and then please be seated for the post. Hear now the benediction. Friends, we're a Pentecost people, and God has a lot of work for us to do. So let's rally up and let the whoosh of the Spirit fill us so people will wonder what we're up to. Amen. You can stand and sing the benediction song.
members and their sponsors to go out now. Serving others. Thanks be to God. Let us have a time of fellowship. <laughs> 